you're you're really tired of me at this point. I know. Sorry. Um, so I just wanted to show you basically how to class. Um, I think I've recorded a bunch of these, but I'm just every semester I do a little bit differently to uh, make sure that it's accurate for what we're doing. So first thing is when you log into Canvas, you will see my course, and the course looks like this. This should be the home page. The home page should have. Um, I notice the syllabus is set for the wrong section. <laughs> It'll fix that before you see this. Um, but so this is the basic homepage. All the announcements will be at the top. Uh, no announcements yet because class starts next week. Um, but this right here, these are called the modules. Most of you will just scroll over and look at the to-do list. Yeah. Um, and that's not the best way to do the class because you don't see a lot of the media. I can look at the people tab. And if I click on the people tab, I can see what you're doing and what you're not doing. Um, I generally don't do that because I trust that you're in college and you're here and you're doing what you're supposed to do. Um, so I just wanted to kind of show you the, the way that this class works. You can click on the syllabus. And again, this is from the other class, but by the time you see this, it'll be set for your class. Um, if you scroll, if you kind of scroll down through it, okay, you click on next, if you can look at all these things. Oh, I made some really fun videos on how to use and how not to use AI. Um, hit next. I'll share a more about those later. So this is what the course will look like at the end. This is my previous semester's course. So um, what I do is each one of the, the modules, I record answers to your questions. So I want you to ask questions. I want you to ask intelligence questions. I want you to ask questions that are deep and understanding. I don't want basic surface level questions. I want things that make me go, dang, I don't know the answer to that. Um, let me look that up and I'll pretend that I know the answer, but really I've been Googling 15 or 20 minutes before I answer the question. So sometimes if I, and all of a sudden I move, that's because I didn't know the answer. Uh, misophonia, that was a one that I did not remember. I had to look that up last semester. Um, it's the being overstimulated by loud noises. Uh, averse to loud noises. Anyway, I had to look that up. I know it now. I kind of knew it before, but I, it fell out of my brain somewhere. Do not get old, let me tell you. Whew. Um, where'd I pack my cat? I don't know. Anyway, so as so, but every chapter I will post links. And now there are some chapters that I will not post links. And that's because A, I get too busy. B, I forget. C, I don't care. Oh, wait, C. No, no C. I do care. Um, it's because sometimes we don't cover some chapters in depth or more or not. So there's also extra little things that I stick on here. So every module, every module has modules. Every module has a link to this page, okay? Because those are where, this is my lecture content. This is where I'm giving you information. The, one of my favorite pages that I spend more time on probably than I should is the TED and More Media Fit. I, I'll, I'll, I have to edit this page to make it look a little nicer. Um, but what I keep doing is I keep dumping, um, dumping videos that are just a freaking amazing. I love Allie Ward. Um, she is a, just a science writer and a very fun person. She cusses a lot, so be careful. Um, Hidden Brain is really cool. I've talked to the guy who uh, runs the program a couple times. He won't put me on the show because I'm not famous, and I really don't need to be on the show because I'm, I'm not famous. But I've talked with the guy, Shark Harvey Danton, a few times. He's so cool. I really, I, his voice is really irritating to me though. But, and also Freakonomics. So there's a really cool study of behavioral economics. If you like business, um, and if you like the way that the world works, not just the way people work, Freakonomics is a combination of economics, which is finance and business, and then sociology and psychology mixed together. It's really, really cool. Um, there's really neat stuff in there. Anyway. So, so as we go down, there are chapters and there, the chapters go along with the modules and each of the modules have, there's a couple different videos that if you really want to watch, um, they're just really cool. Uh, every semester I have students giving me more uh, videos. Some of them are boring. Some of them are exciting. Some of them are fun. They're all really cool. This one's really, really old anyway, but they're all really good. And so the idea of it is, is that if the more you're exposed to the information, the more that you remember, okay? So 
in here, so here's the first assignment due on the Wednesday. I need to take attendance, and this is the way I take attendance. It proved that you're a real person, not a robot. We've had a lot of robots taking the courses over the last year or two, so um, we're, we're cracking down on the robots. No robots, and I know, I'm sorry, I'm being uh, human, human centric, um, but sorry, robots, take your own class. Okay. So I'll talk about the grading rubric in a second. As we scroll down through, we look at this and say, okay, every chapter starts with what we call learning objectives. Learning objectives are ways that I just wrote these down to kind of think about what you want to be going through during this particular, the whole chapter. What things should you think about? Different perspectives, major goals, and historical fields. Why do we care about history? Why do we care about this stuff? Well, that's what we'll talk about in the first, first unit. Okay, so, and then there is the TED Talks. I, again, watching the TED Talks for the first chapter. And then there's these links. These links take you to the textbook, Contemporary History of Psychology. Yes, everybody loves history. So what this is, this takes you to an open source textbook. It's free. You just click on the link. Um, if you want a real print version, 36 bucks. We have one or two in the library. I think I actually have a printed copy in here on single-sided pages. It's like that thick. Um, I had a student who had special needs that needed to print textbooks so she could write on it. Got you. Got you covered. Okay. And so again, this talks about the basic analysis. Uh, we don't talk about Freud anymore. It's kind of funny, but we just don't talk about it anymore. Um, and so when you look at these things, this is the basic history of psych. And should you read it all? I don't know if you should read it all. I would scroll through it as I'm scrolling through. And if something sounds interesting, stop, read it. Um, if something doesn't sound interesting, scroll on. Uh, as we go through, I'll ask you more specific questions. And maybe if you just kind of scroll through the chapters, you'll just like, hey, wait a minute, that's interesting. What can, what can I do in psych or careers in psych? Yeah. Okay, so that is, that's the textbook. Um, and it's free, it's good, um, and it's great. Okay, that's all I got. So as we go on through the class, there are these little assignments. So every single chapter has, notice there's not really a assignment for chapter one because me. Okay, but every single, well, actually, I think the assignments aren't, sorry. This is what my side of it looks like. Um, I haven't made the assignments public yet because uh, I'm still editing them from last semester because we get robots taking the class and they harvest what was done last semester. So I edit everything every year, um, which is a lot of work for me. Thanks, robots. OK, so the first assignment that you're going to do is about using AI um, and about how AI is good and how AI is evil. Um, and yeah, we'll see how that works. Um, and then. We also, we also look at different schools of psych and find out information. So each one of these little assignments, let's look at the Y psychology discussion. Um, again, this will change by the time you're seeing it. It'll look a little different because robots have already done this. Um, what dough they study. Man, I can't spell anything. Hold on. Um, I have probably dyslexia and very bad attention deficit. So I, if you type something that ain't good, I'll read it. I get it. I really would rather not um, you use Grammarly or those kind of things because it doesn't teach you to be a better writer. It just makes you a better writer. And sometimes just somebody teaching you to be a better writer is much better than having you have better writing. So using all those tools, they're good in that your product sounds better, but they're bad because you really don't learn how to do it right. Um, and learning how to do things correctly really changes the way that you go. We'll talk about this with developmental psych as we go on. Okay, so every single discussion, every single discussion, I want you to hear, I wanna hear your authentic voice. I do not want AI voice. I don't want it to be created so it sounds like good college language. I want you to create your own language not literally create your own language, but I want you to create your own personal space and style and self. And your self is valuable and important. And that's what this class is about. And so we need to hear it. Um, I So let's go talk about the grading then. Wow. 
So the weighted grading rubric is, um, I have to change this because I got a complaint this summer that I called someone that they didn't have a soul. Um, not human evident. I don't know if that's the right word. Not human response. Evidence of AI, no revisions allowed. So if you turn an assignment and it's crap, sorry, it's it's not up to the academic standards required by the institution, it's crap. So if you turn in something, I'm going to go, you know, can you revise this, please? And I'll give you a needs revision. I usually just says revision because needs revision is a lot more finger typed than just typing revision. And so I'm going to give you a revision. If it's not right, you missed something, you didn't follow the prompt, I'm going to ask you to do it again. And not again, just edit it, just fix it. Please, if you edit a discussion post, let me know. Because I don't, an edit, I don't see. If you post again, I see. If you edit, I don't see. So if you get a revision in the grading rubrics, um, then really important, you get to see it. Okay, so I'm going to hit save here. And I'm going to hit, um, that's, oh, that's published. Okay, so there are, going to be um, these these connections essays. And actually, I changed the word for connections essays, but they're connections essays, but they're called assessments. There's assessment one, two, three, four, and five. And these five different assessments are really important. Um, what they are is it's you demonstrating the material to me. And you get basically, if you do it correctly, you get a criteria and there's a grading rubric on it. And if you get the grading rubric, if you meet the grading rubric, you get a criteria that's one. You have to get, you in order to get an A in the course, you have to get criteria on all five. You have to meet criteria on all five. You have to demonstrate that you've learned this material on all five. If you dump AI in, I'm going to say a non-human response, evidence of AI, I won't let you revise it. And of course, I'm a softie. If you do it and you panic because you don't have it done, of course, I'll let you revise it. I'm not that guy, but really important. Um, a bunch of students who were using AI never went and checked their grading. So they got to the end of the semester and it was all AI and they had revisions. And then they emailed me after why I get F in your class. I'm like, well, you didn't do anything in my class. They had logged in for a total of about 15 minutes total for the entire summer and they didn't do any work. They had assignments turned in for everything, but it was all AI generated exactly like the ones that I'm going to send you in a different post. So please don't do that. What I want you to do is spend some time and learn stuff. My campus class has to do analog assessments, analog assessments, non-digital assessments. Oh, it's going to be great. Handwritten. I have to read a bunch of handwritten stuff and you guys haven't learned handwriting. Oh, well, moving on. So in order to get criteria on the connections essays, you have to include content from the assignments. There's about 20 assignments. This will change once I finish the building the class. So each of the little assignment is a criteria, non-criteria kind of thing. Um, again, you dump AI in, I'm not going to grade it. I'm going to say, can you just do this again? I'll click the reassign button. And when you look at the grades, all they are is zeros. Everything is worth zero points because I don't add a points value. You're not getting points. What you're getting is met criteria. And the reason I do this is called ungrading. It's because as you learn, like I'll use weightlifting, for example, oh, I can use a better example, making coffee. How do you know you know how to make coffee? You make it. What if it sucks? You drink it anyway. No, you change what you did and make it again. And if it's better, you're like, all right, I'm getting better. If it still sucks, you change again and do it again until you've had like three cups of coffee and you have one that tastes good. Mm, even bad coffee is good. I want more coffee. Nope. More coffee. I've already, that's, that's my, my cup for the day. I've already had two at home and then that one. But so the idea is that you keep practicing and trying until you get it right. So it's really important that you push yourself to get it right at the beginning, because if you push yourself to get it right at the beginning, it's much easier to stay up on things. Okay. So now if you are struggling, if you are having trouble, please reach out to me. There's my contact information is splattered all over this class. 
And second thing, if you want to lurk in a class, okay, if you want to come and see what a campus class is like on Mondays and Wednesdays at 12.30, I have a live campus class, which I will post the Zoom link for. I also have a class on Tuesday, Thursdays at 11, which I will post the Zoom link for. If you want to come to class and actually sit in a real class, you are more than welcome to A, Zoom in or physically show up on campus. I don't care. Um, again, you don't have to. I have the campus course and this course following the same schedule. So the assignments are due approximately the same day. Um, and so if you want to bounce ideas off of another class, please do so. Um, just ask me and I will give you the Zoom link that the other classes are using and you can Zoom in if you're at a high school kid or you can, um, if you're a real person, um, no offense high school kids, but I've got one left, he's a senior, and then I'm free of you people. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, all right. That's it. That's too long of a video. You've already stopped watching it by this point.